YouTube, but I'm back with another video. And in case you can't tell, I'm trying to do like a Spider-Man 3 sort of look, but I'm not as cool as Tobey Maguire, so whatever. Um, so yeah, I've been sort of watching, some of the videos I've been watching recently have been a uh, sort of like movie based about like a, why this movie works so well, why this director is so uh, like perfect. Why this transition in a movie, like, changes the whole way we look at movies. Sort of stuff like that. I don't know. Uh, so, I saw, like, a tweet, and I had been thinking about this sort of for a while. Um, I'll, I can't talk about the tweet just yet, because I haven't seen the movie. But we'll get into it when I see the movie. Or if I see the movie. Um, but today we're going to talk about... Um, Ultimate Spider-Man and why I love it so much. Why it's like my favorite all-time Spider-Man story. Um, and yeah, sort of that that sort of thing. Um, so, ta-da! Here's this volume six. Now, I um. You know what, screw it. we'll get into the meme now, I guess, for like a little bit, and we'll see how it, it compares to this video that I'm making now, like a week before. It's, yeah, it's, we got like a couple days in between. So it should be like the first, I believe. Let's see. It's the third, so I'm really behind. So we got like four more days till it comes out. Um, But... I, people have been comparing Homecoming to Ultimate Spider-Man. I'm going to kind of try to like disprove that and why it's wrong. Um, why I think it's wrong, in my opinion. Um, now, everybody's like, oh my god, he tries so hard to like, uh, to, uh, like, prove himself to Iron Man and Captain America like an Ultimate Spider-Man. But, here's the thing. That's not necessarily true. Okay, like, in this version of Ultimate Spider-Man, it's by Brian Michael Bendis, like, before. But, see, this is written in, like, 2006 or 5-ish, I believe. So this is when early Ultimate Spider-Man came out. This is when it was really good. This is from 2011 or 12. So this is when it was, like, no, because he died in 2011. So this came out in, like, 2010. So, like, this is when it was kind of starting to, like, get old and it wasn't as good, I thought, because... Okay, now see, here's the thing. This has, like, more jokes in it. This is more like the Andrew Garfield sort of Spider-Man. Because, you know, like, everybody's making a joke and everybody's hilarious and goofy and wacky and wild. At least in The Amazing Spider-Man 2. I don't know. Those movies are weird. They have inconsistencies. Um, but the thing I love about this this book series, when it was just, when it was early, is that Brian Michael Bendis made him like an actual teenager. Now the thing about Spider-Man Homecoming is it seems like it's going to be more lighthearted, it's going to be goofy and everything. Because, see, that's the problem I have, is a lot of people think like, oh, if you're Spider-Man and you're a kid, it's going to be great, it would be really fun, right? Okay, like, sure, for like, like, that's the thing though, is nobody... Like, everybody's like, oh, being Spider-Man's great, la 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 la. No, like, people don't understand how horrible that would be. Okay, swinging around the city would be fun, but if you killed your uncle indirectly, that would be a huge weight upon your shoulders. That's the thing that people, like, kind of bug me, especially when they make Spider-Man Homecoming, especially when they're making it and talking about Spider-Man Homecoming. Like, no, he killed his uncle. Like, he has a lot of pressure on his shoulders, like, Especially because in like this in this book series, specifically, he knows how the world works because he's like seen people do bad stuff, like Doctor Connors. He's seen him take his own blood, or take he's taken Peter Parker's blood and made carnage. So he's like seen the way the world and like the uh, the adults per se work. Like uh, there should be some stuff in here. Let's see, like. Like, uh, 
right here on the computer. Like, you know, shows Eddie the uh, symbi- like when he shows Eddie that he took the symbi he's like, I swear I was going to sit down and really talk to you about this, but after I got rid of it, I wasn't going to leave you hanging, but the fact of the matter is, I had run in with situations like this. Men, men stronger and smarter than both of us, who find themselves with something like this.